Welcome to another episode of Biohacking Beauty with me, Amitai Eshel. I am the co-founder and CEO of Young Goose, the world's first biohacking skincare, which this podcast is brought to you by. In this episode, this is going to be a solo episode. I'm going to be recording it alone. We're going to be talking about skincare formulation and the, the meta, the overall approach of skincare right now uh, in the world and, and as it pertains to us. We are going to dive deep today into what our approach to skin health is, how you customize your skincare routine, clean versus medical skincare, and sun protection in general. You'll learn how to adjust skincare to your own needs, how to combine lifestyle and skincare to kind of create the best result for your skin and how to navigate between uh, different, let's say, modalities of skincare that are out there. Before we kind of dive deep into the podcast, it would really mean the world to us at uh, the Biohacking Beauty Podcast and Young Goose. If you take two seconds out of your day and subscribe to our podcast, share it with anyone that you know reap benefits and in, be interested in this podcast. And last thing but not least, uh, this podcast is brought to you by, as I said, Young Goose, the biohacking skincare uh, company. And you know what we're very excited about is our new product that's coming out now that's called Bio Barrier that really biohacks the skin barrier and improves it and even optimizes it, it if uh, we could be so blunt. So without further ado, we're going to start this uh, solo episode. So our solo episodes basically... Uh, are coming. They're not really a PSA where we wanted to talk about maybe about um, things that are closer to our heart here at Young Goose. The first episode was about NAD, which obviously uh, was kind of the reason why we started this company in order to solve the problem with NAD in our skin. But Young Goose is way more than that. We believe it's a, um, it's a platform to improve your skin's health. Most of the things that we provide obviously have no connection to to us as a producer of skincare, we're talking about different lifestyle approaches that improve our overall health and therefore our skin health. But what we wanted to do in this episode is really give our philosophy about skincare to look at why we're doing the things that we're doing, the decisions that we're making and what we would like our customer to be educated on. Starting with our approach to taking care of the skin, we basically the pyramid of uh, skin health, basically. And if you imagine this pyramid, the most important, most basic layer of this pyramid is our lifestyle. It means the, obviously, the exercise that we do is about in any regular episode of this podcast, right? What actions, what decisions we're making every day uh, in order to improve over overall health, which then would be expressed in our skin health. And um, really you could think of any decision you're making during your day, during your life, as either a decision that is taking you towards health or towards disease. And that is also a way to approach any decision about our skin. Is it taking us towards a better skin or a more aged skin. And within those decisions, we are looking at obviously supplements, movement, sleep, uh, inflammation, you know, everything that's, that we're talking about on a regular basis here. But above that basic layer, we are starting to look at things that we can do topically uh, for our skin. And why is that? Because actually our skin, as opposed to other organs in our body, ages mostly from the outside, from the elements. Uh, we can look at people who have, have been dealing with uh, one modality or another that's got to do with, it, with, with longevity for a very long period of time, but their skin isn't looking that great. And the reason is, is because even if you take very good care of your skin, your health from the inside, your skin is an organ that is your protective barrier or is your buffer zone between the elements and um, and your inner inner health. And normally it's going to sacrifice itself, quote unquote, in order to protect the other organs of our body, the other elements of our body. So our skin experiences a lot of DNA damage, a lot of physical damage during our lifetime. And our body is not doing a good job addressing that first. Obviously us 
in the modern society, we're very interested in how our skin looks, etc. But from a survival standpoint, it is less important, especially after reproductive age, as, as beings that have been evolved to reproduce. Our body is doing a way poorer job at maintaining our appearance past uh, reproductive, optimal reproductive age. Uh, and that is why what we're going to be touching on today is those other points in the pyramid. So the, the next layer in the pyramid is fuel. And that fuel, obviously we were talking about uh, NAD before, but that is any fuel that our skin can get, uh, whether from the outside or from the inside, in order to repair itself, in order to have maybe a full uh, tank of gas for repair processes. And that obviously we, we mentioned uh, NAD, that's the most important uh, fuel source for, the, for those repair processes. Uh, but other fuel sources are obviously healthy fats, antioxidants, the, the fact that our, we have correct and good blood flow that can get to our skin and our lymphatic drainage that can kind of take uh, things out that shouldn't be there. And basically maintaining a full gas of tank as far as our repair processes in our skin. When we have that full tank of gas, our skin or wrinkles in our skin, pigmentation, um, laxity, whatever that is, we can think of it as a bone that is not healed well. And what I mean by that is, let's say we take our finger and we break it and it heals in a certain way. Our body isn't aware that if we're gonna improve its health, it should go back, correct that bone uh, fusion in a different way. That's already fused, that's already healed. So what we need to do in that case is re-break that bone. And the same thing is true with our skin. We need to go back and stimulate repair wherever we want repair to happen. And that we can do in a few ways. We can do it from an epigenetic point of view. So we can basically signal stress and basically cause a response for healing, and we can also do it with physical damage, such as microneedling, lasers, radiofrequency, retinols. The issue here, and something that part of this conversation needs to be revolving around, is that the more damage we're stimulating, the more cellular turnover, the more kind of cellular division we're, we're placing a demand on our skin to do. What is the issue with that? The issue is that we're calling upon reservoirs which our skin will need to eventually will need to go without. So if we're planning on living until the age 100, 120, I heard someone saying that they're planning on living until 180, which is great. You need to understand that these reservoirs are whatever you want your skin to use now, they're not going to have as much to use later. That's the first problem. So we need to be mindful of that and balance stimulation. That's why it is a, a further up the pyramid, so we should do less of it than uh, fueling. Because first and foremost, if we're not fully fueled, more reservoirs are gonna be needed for each repair process. So we're gonna be using more and more of those later on reservoirs our skin uh, relies on in order to um, respond to that stimulation. Uh, one thing that we might uh, dive further into in later episodes is something called telomeres. Telomeres are the ends of, ends of our chromosomes, and they actually, you could think of them as the plastic and the shoelaces in our, in our shoelaces, right? So if the plastic that protects the ends of our shoelaces, you know, finishes for some reason, the shoelace starts to unwind. As far as our cell goes and our DNA goes, every time we split a cell, every time the cell needs to duplicate itself, it loses some of that, of that length of the telomeres. The telomeres sacrifice themselves. When they are completely shortened, the cell is not going to renew itself anymore, which means we're now having a problem if we want more renewal. So technically speaking, every time we cause cell division, we're actually aging our cell because we're, we're not gonna be able to do it later on. So the more fuel we have, the more kind of uh, energy our cells have, the less that telomere shortening happen. And obviously we can also do things to support telomere length, which we can talk about later on. 
but in general, something to understand. We want to stimulate we want to stimulate renewal. We want our skin to look the best right now. There is a very risky dance going on with am I depleting something that my skin's gonna uh, require later on? I'm saving this point for later in our conversation today. But our last point of the pyramid is protection, whether it would be sun protection or whether it would be uh, protection against the elements. Uh, so obviously we're in front of screens a lot. So blue light, uh, free radicals in the environment, pollution, all of those things cause damage to our skin, DNA damage, physical damage, which our skin needs to deal with. So we need to protect against that as well. That is our pyramid. That is what we're working with when we're talking about skin health. And through that pyramid, now we're gonna be looking at different, or our Young Goose's approach as far as skincare goes. So the first thing that, that we wanna understand is that our skincare is mainly, skincare, first of all, is something that can be adjusted to an individual, but it can also be kind of a, a copy-paste system from a person to a person. And why is that? Because normally you could classify your skin as being sensitive, you know, dry, oily, anything like that. And you're gonna get a very, very, you know, generic steps, if you would, in order to take care of your skin. So if we have oily skin or dry skin, we're gonna be choosing our, moisture, our, our cleanser and our moisturizers accordingly. In general, in Young Goose, we believe that we can kind of balance those things. Uh, through serums, which we're gonna be talking about in a second. So we only use really one moisturizer and one cleanser because that is a one size fits all for the most part, unless you're extremely either sensitive, extremely dry or extremely, extremely uh, oily, you might not enjoy our products, but 99% of people will be using the same one. Where do we really find customization or addressing specific issues, that is through serums. So moisturizer, cleanser, our Bio-C peptide spray, all of those are pretty rigid. Anyone can use them. What we wanna do is now think of what serums we're using in order to give direction to our skincare. So our uh, care concentrated moisturizer really has all the fueling elements that our skin needs, which we spoke about in that pyramid. So it will basically fill up the tank for our repair processes that we want our skin to do, the maintenance processes that we want the skin to do, basically give the skin the ability to perform whatever task we're asking it to do. But then we need to figure out, well, what are we asking the skin to do? So if we're not doing anything extra, the skin is gonna paint itself in a more youthful state, but we can now ask the skin to do specific things because it is in a youthful state. So we created serums that uh, either it's our bioretinol that asks for repair, where, whether it's the HA firming boost that asks for added hydration or our pro care that really asks for from that epigenetic expression for uh, um, repair on a much, much deeper level. Um, all of those really rely on that fuel. You could think of uh, care concentrated moisturizer as your full tank of gas and the serums as the gas pedal, so, or the steering wheel. Where are we taking this, our skincare routine? As far as, as our approach to our ingredients specifically, there are two schools of thought in general in skincare. And obviously there is a spectrum on which every company moves on, but one is called clean skincare and the other is medical grade skincare. And within that, that spectrum, all companies uh, lie. And when we say clean skincare, and we're gonna go to the end of the spectrum, is really using ingredients that you could technically eat. When we're talking about medical skincare, and we're going to the other end of the spectrum, is keeping the ingredients or the active ingredients within the formula at their peak state and having the most effective form of them. Why are these two um, contradicting each other? Because when we're looking at clean skincare, we could, for that example, Think of a juice that we just made or a smoothie that we just made that has only good ingredients and really we're just applying this on our skin. Few challenges that this approach has. First is the 
combination between the molecules, their different pH levels, their different acidity, basically, and the way that that interacts with our skin. That is a little problematic because they are actually, our skin is not designed to absorb them very well. So they're, if they're not processed in a certain way, which communicates or, or bypasses some of the skin's protection, we're really not gonna get a lot of benefits from them. The second issue that we have here is that normal skincare sits on, on, on a shelf for months, sometimes even years. So you can think of any smoothie that you let sit on a shelf for, I don't know, five months, and then let's see if you're gonna, if you're gonna eat it or drink it. I wouldn't wanna you know, sip on any smoothie like that, nor would I really want anything else that sat on the shelf for that long inside my body, technically. On the other hand, medical skincare, part of the issues with that is using very aggressive stabilizers and endocrine disruptors and anything that's gonna keep the formula at its peak state, but it doesn't look at it, any, anything else that gets into our body. So at Youngles, we try to kind of, you know, kind of get the best of, of both worlds. We're using extremely, extremely small amounts of stabilizers and preservatives, which most of them actually evaporate on contact. So when we kind of rub the skin, the uh, product on our face, they actually evaporate, uh, such as the silicone we use in, on some of our products uh, that actually doesn't absorb into the skin. But the other ingredients that we use that, that can be looked at as unclean, they are actually making the formula in our eyes more clean because it's making sure that the active ingredients are what, what is stated on the label. They don't change over time or degrade over time. They don't become rancid over time. And um, they are at such small amounts that we are actually getting more endocrine disruptors or anything like that from the environment, just living our day-to-day -day lives or from you know eating fruit that, you know, grown with water that is sub subpar or anything like that. So our skincare really, skincare really tries to um, kind of settle between those, those two elements, obviously using the extremely high amount of active ingredients we have in our products that are higher than any other skincare out there. So we need to find that right balance. And the right balance normally is using very, very, very small amount of those uh, ingredients. And that is kind of the, 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 the back and forth that we're going with. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about is sun protection. So the problem with sun protection a lot of the times is, is the products that contain what is called chemical SPF, and there is also mineral SPF, so or mineral sunblock and chemical sunblock. So what are those two things and why, why should we be cognizant of them? So, um, chemical SPF basically absorbs the, uh, the light energy and disperses it, or the UV light, and disperses it. The issue with that is that it actually creates a layer. You can even thought, think of like a, a lens, like a sun, uh, sunglass lens that is formed in the top layer of your skin. And the issue is with that is that this, the sun is actually a detoxifier. It actually uh, stimulates our body to release toxins. When we create this layer, this layer doesn't only, you know, blocks the UV light from entering our body, but it actually blocks these toxins from leaving our body. And when the sun stimulates detoxification, we're getting into an issue of these toxins getting, trying to get released, but getting concentrated on the top, on the top layers of our skin. And that is very unhealthy. Um, also, these, if we're, we are applying skincare beforehand, if we have applied anything beforehand, even if added ingredients within the SPF, antioxidant, whatever that may be, uh, humectants, that chemical SPF actually accumulates a lot of heat because it absorbs the, the UV light. And by that, it actually can morph, that can change the chemical structure of the other ingredients in the formula. Similar to what we were speaking before when we were talking about clean skincare versus medical skincare, where if we were, you know, if we got the product shipped to us, we live in Texas, 
and the product was made in Boston, until it got shipped to us, it, it was exposed to some of the elements. It wasn't in cooled temperature, and that can actually, if the, the formula is not stable or does not address that, that can cause basically changing of the chemical structure of the molecules. So the formula can say beet juice, carrot juice, and whatever, but by the time you're getting it, you're getting something chemically completely different. Same thing with SPF, it actually can change the chemical structure of the other ingredients that we have in that formula. Then we're looking at zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, which are two molecules that, you're, that we're seeing more and more in sunblocks, which actually repel the sun, the sun rays, the UV rays from entering the skin like a mirror would instead of like sunglass lens would. And the issue with those is that they're great. These are the ones that we recommend actually. The only issue with those are that they do not appear very nice. So they can create a white residue. Uh, some brands offer tinted uh, sunblocks, mineral sunblocks. These normally, you know, are not optimal because again, that, that tint can accumulate heat and change the chemical structure of other things in the formula. So normally uh, these are the challenges uh, that that are exist with these two uh, types of sunblock. Uh, we're trying to work on something unique here at Nyangus and, and we're probably gonna have something in about a month or so. But that is that is kind of uh, maybe the state of skincare speech as far as uh, Young Goose is concerned. This was more of a review because we're trying to keep the, these podcasts short. Uh, please let us know if there's anything more specific you, that you would like us to dive into uh, from today's episode. But um, yeah, thank you very much. That was, uh, my name is Amitai from Young Goose. And I wish you all a pleasant rest of your day. Thank you very much.